Hello and welcome to another What's New video for Cabinet Vision version 9.0. In this video we will be going over the changes that have been made to the Material Manager, formerly known as the Material Catalog. With that said, let's dive in by opening the Material Manager now. We can see that there has been a major overhaul to the user interface or UI of the Material Manager. I want to explain this one panel at a time. So first off, we have this panel right here. This is the new filter panel. What we can do is enter some text here, and Cabinet Vision will search through all of my materials and all of the groups that have a name that is similar to what we typed here. I know that I have a lot of 3 quarter inch materials in my program, so if I enter 3 forward slash 4 and press enter on my keyboard, we can now see that I have a list of all the materials that have that text in the name. Next up is the category list here. This replaces the material tabs from previous versions. Just to make sure that we're on the same page, or tab, <laughs> here is a snapshot of those tabs from the old material catalog. These tabs here, that's, uh, that's what these represent now. So why the change? Well, it's now easier to create our own groups since we went to this format. All I have to do is right click in the white space here and select create new group. With this new group created, I can now right click on it and either create another new group, delete this group, or rename it. Let's rename it to see that in action. I will now just rename it to my group and press enter. And there we go, a new group of materials, that easy. Next up on the list to talk about is, well, not much yet. Let's select another group to be able to look at the next panel. I think I'll go ahead and select the board stock group. Excellent. So this panel over here will list out all of the materials in the group, and it is also split into sub-panels itself. First, the database ID and name of the material itself is stored in this panel. After that, we have the material properties. First, they are grouped together by property type, these tabs here, then listed out in this series of columns. These columns are resizable, and any changes you make to the size of the property columns will be stored so that it looks exactly the way you set it up now when you return to it at a later time. I don't want to go into detail about the properties here, as that will be a job for your help file. So we'll move on to the new Finish Manager. Like the Material Manager, this has been redesigned for version 9.0. Now we have a color picker to select the color from in addition to the sliders here. For more information, once again, go ahead and take a look at your help files. So let me go ahead and close this window so I can show you the new finished type manager. Now the UI is relatively similar to the previous versions, it's just been rearranged a bit. The big thing for this is that the finished type manager now uses the PhotoVision rendering engine to show us a more accurate rendition of what we will see while working in cabinet vision. Let's close this dialog so that we can look at the new Texture Manager. As you can see, it's very similar to the Material Manager. I have the groups here to select from, which will show all the textures from that group. And I also have a filter box that works just like the Material Manager's does. Now, this is a really simple one, so I'm just going to go ahead and close this. And now I want to show you the new Vendor Manager which is pretty much a simple list of vendors. You get to enter the name of the vendor, as well as an address, phone information, email information, your main contact at this vendor, any comments you have about this vendor, your account number, and finally, the sales tax that this vendor charges. Uh, since this is a big list, you can add as many as you need or as many as you use on a daily basis. Now that I have a vendor made, let's go ahead and close this dialog out. Going about adding a vendor to a material is done through the properties of that material, so let's go ahead and take a look at how that works in the new Material Manager. To do that, we just need to select a material, then click the Properties Command button in the Materials group of the ribbon bar. Alternatively, we could have just double clicked on the material as well. Now, to be honest, this dialog could actually be its very own material manager in and of itself. As you can see, we can create new materials, copy the selected material, delete the selected material, and select other materials to look at the properties of inside of this dialog. All of the properties that are pertinent to this specific material are shown here in the property editor. 
This little window here will give an illustration of certain properties when you select them. What I really want to show off though is the advanced ribbon group. The first item in the group is the kit command. When we click on that we get this dialog. This allows us to create a kit for a material. Now, what's a kit? Well, we define a kit as a material that needs additional materials to kind of finish it off. A great example would be a wire pull. The pull is only one part of the material. You might need two screws as well to make it complete. Using a kit, you could select your pull and then add the screw materials to the pull. The materials available to you are going to be here on the right pane, while the left pane is what actually makes up the kit. You can either select materials and click one of the buttons, or you can drag and drop from one pane to the other. Now let's go ahead and close this dialog out, and then take a look at the parameters command button. This dialog allows us to place any number of custom parameters onto a material. These parameters can be used to provide object tree and UCS level access to your very own custom parameters. This functions just like the parameters dialog at the splash screen. We just add a new parameter, give it a name we will use to access the parameter, a description for us, select the type, and then give it a value. Now every part that uses this material will be able to access this parameter easily. Next on the list we will take a look at the vendor properties. This isn't setting up a vendor like when we use the vendor manager, rather it's how we will assign vendors to a material. Now this is like the kit dialog in that we have a list of vendors here and the vendors that are being used over here. If you've used previous versions of Cabinet Vision, you know that it used to be you could only have one vendor per material. Now you can have two, three, heck, you have as many as you need. For instance, if you get your three quarter inch two sided maple plywood from two different vendors, you can set them both on the material then select which one to use later after you've made the job. Now you can also select a default vendor. This is the vendor that is used as the typical vendor that you purchase this material from. Once that's done, we can just close this dialog so that we can move on to, well, nothing yet, but uh, I want to show you the new molding properties. So let's go ahead and find a molding material for us to work with. Since this is the only molding I have in my material list, we'll use this one. Now what's this little plus symbol next to the material? Well, this, this illustrates an entirely new feature that I will talk about before we look at the molding properties. If we expand out this material, we can see that there are multiple materials below it. These are called aliases. An alias is a material that is identical to its parent material except in one or two small ways, typically. For my moldings, the only real difference is in the length of each molding profile. So first, let's create a new alias of this molding. To do that, we just make sure that the parent material is selected. Then we click on the new alias button here. Cabinet Vision now wants us to create a new material, but we can't select the type. And that's because it's supposed to be an alias of this molding, so it has to be a molding type. So let's give it a unique name. I'll call it Molding 6, just to make it easy. When I click OK, we can see that it added it to the list. To see the differences in the aliases, I need to go to the molding tab for this, although we could make changes in any of the properties. Now as you can see, I have different lengths on each alias, which in the case of moldings allow us to specify a molding with a selected profile to have various lengths, which Cabinet Vision will figure out what length to order based on what we have drawn in the job. And now that we've gone over that, let's move back to the Properties dialog to take a look at the Molding Command button. Once we click on this button, it brings us to the Molding Editor, just like it would in the Molding Manager. For more information on that, please take a look at that What's New video, as well as looking at your help files. So I'm going to close this out, and we have one button left. Well, two actually, but the last one in this order, uh, the Model Command button. As we can see, I can't assign a model to the molding, well, at least not like this. So let's find a material that I can assign a model to. I think a good example would be the caster materials. So let's uh, select that and open the properties. Now let's click on the model command button to bring us into the model editor. This is a place that we can import one or more 3D models to create a material that has more depth to it as well as can automatically add operations to parts and such. 
As you can see, I have full 3D preview capabilities and a lot of tools to get everything set up the way I need. To get the most out of this editor, I do suggest that you take a look at your help files to see how everything here works. Now I'm just going to go ahead and close this. And I guess we can talk about the one I skipped over earlier, the composites. To do that, we need to create a new material. Let's put this material in the group we created, my group. So we now get the option to specify the type of material it is. We'll select composite, then give it a name and description. I'll keep it simple. We'll call it my first composite, and uh, my first composite material is the description. Excellent. Now we just click finish, and there's the new material. Let's double click on it to get to the properties. Now finally, we can actually use the composite command button. So let's go ahead and click that. And just like with other advanced properties, we see that I have a list of available materials here on the right and a list of selected materials here on the left. The list of available materials is produced from the panel stock and laminate materials. I will just uh, select a couple of materials like a 3 quarter inch material and an eighth inch material. Now I have the ability to set the order in which they are placed as well as the face up down on both of them and even an oversized value so that each material could be oversized for placing. Great for like plastic laminates and veneers. Now I can close this and there we have it. When I use this material in cabinet vision, the resulting material will be the thickness of all the materials in the composite. So for instance our material would be 7 eighths of an inch thick since we use 3 quarter inch material and 8 inch material. So let me go ahead and delete this now and uh, since I don't want this clogging up my material manager. You know what? This would be a good time to show off this other new feature of the material manager. See this group down here named deleted? Let's go ahead and click on it to take a look at what's in there. And there's the material we just made. Think of this group as a recycle bin like on your desktop. Just because you delete a material doesn't mean it's entirely gone. Rather, it's just been moved here. Now if I delete it from here, it is then gone forever. But I can actually restore this material by right-clicking on it and selecting Restore. If we go back to our group, we can see that it has been placed right back where it is. The final thing I want to go over is the new Clamex connector material that has been added for version 9. To do that, let's go ahead and go to the connectors group and add a new material. We'll call it Clamex and give it a description of my first Clamex. Now you can see that we have the option to click the next button, so let's go ahead and do that. And we can see the connector properties. We can specify the unit of issue for this connector as well as a type. Let's look at the available types real quick. You can see that we have a few built-in types. These types will have their own models and will create operations according to the respective manufacturer's specifications. If we wanted to provide our own model and operation information, we could use the connector type. I will once again click next to show the final connector options, if that connector has them. And when we press finish, we can see that we have a new Clamex material. Like I said, it will have all the operations on it so that we can now CNC the operations to place these connectors in our parts. Now I just want to say thank you for taking the time to watch this video on the new features of Cabinet Vision Solid version 9.0. If you need any additional information, please visit us at www.cabinetvision.com to learn more about Cabinet Vision.